I am the OG freestyle rapper of Central Massachusetts. What's your name? Total Boy. You can freestyle? Uh, yeah, I'm like the best. Here we go. I'm nervous. <laughs> Boston Jazz has A.B. Jackson. Suspect is Christine Mackin. Now there is the scuttle, but neighborhood recognized both cut. Steal inside is your vice. Learn that shit at Brandeis. Wants to be on the police, but the crime rate will increase. Criminals get rehab. Bitch and neighbors just got that. Her proposal got rejected. How this stuff you get elected? Photo strip show her the door. Then that bitch can try some more. Rachel Becky thinks she woke. She looked okay until she spoke. Says she don't want no more wants. Throws her foot down and she stops. Says that she was terrified, but she just wants to divide. Says that Braintree is racist. Three buzzwords off a list. Says she got the white privilege. Bitch, I'll save you two South Bridge. They don't know what you're speaking, because they all is Puerto Rican. Says racism is systemic. White hoes are the real pandemic. She needs white fragility, but she choke up ability. Bitch was racist on occasion. She hates you if you are Asian. Girl, I know that you is white, but hit me up if you're trying to get right. Black lives matter, new bed bird. Written crimes, undeterred. When your name is Shakira, you get your news from Al Jazeera. Signs us, fuck the police. Gravy, gravy, get released. Raw dog, he be loving. Now there's a bun in the oven. If it's ratchet, you be craving. Get your ass, keep it haven. Says that he is oppressed. Then shot a guy in the chest. Says that they peaceful with the lie. Blame it on New Bedford guys. I reject your old view. Black lives don't matter to you. Turtle boy, double feature. Four red kingdoms are in future. Keep your stuff on the prom. From drafting to Agawam. Or some pictures. They be itching. But you back. All right, what's up, Turtle Riders? How are we all doing out there tonight? Let me go ahead and fix. Uh, nope, wrong one there. That's the one we want. Let me go ahead and fix my microphone here to the built in one. Give me one moment. And that should be a little bit clearer, I believe. Okie dokie, folks. So, welcome to the live show, guys. Uh, it's a pleasure being with you here tonight, as usual. Um, I have shared the link to this. On the Clarence Woods Emerson page, as well as the Turtle Boy Sports Forever page. And I would ask that you guys share that too. Let people know that we're live. Get people to subscribe to the channel. Let's get this going. We're up to like 11,600. That's not too shabby, but it's definitely not as easy picking up subs on YouTube. Because I'm really like a blog guy. I'm a Facebook guy at the end of the day. YouTube is my side gig, but I like doing it. So, um, yeah, definitely feel free to share that. Let people know. I've also shared it on Twitter. I've been on Twitter for like... Over three months now, miraculously. I'm at Real Uncle TB. I've shared it on there. Um, and feel free to retweet that if you're on there as well. All right. So, um, this episode is brought to you by our good friends over uh, at Turtle Boy. So, I'm going to go ahead and share the link to the donation thing. If you guys want to donate, boom, there it is. If not, that's cool too. I don't really care. I like it, but I also don't mind it if you don't. It's cool. I understand. A lot of you guys have donated plenty already, so uh, you've done more than you share, and this is free entertainment, and I'm happy to provide it. Um, but, you know, if you feel like helping out, I won't object. Let's just put it that way. So there's a link. Uh, if you do donate, I'm going to read off your funny comments, no matter what you put uh, or how inappropriate it is, unless I'm, like, legally bound by a, you know, a court agreement not to talk about it, then I can say whatever the hell I want, can't I? So, okie dokie. So without further ado... Let's start with our first topic, shall we, of the day that I didn't really get to the other day. How awesome was Tuesday's show, by the way? I think Tuesday's show is really underrated. We had uh, Tori from Target on here. That was cool. And we also had Rayla Campbell on. And uh, so we didn't get to talk about one of the stories that I wanted to talk about. And that was uh, what happened over at, uh, in Worcester, it was a Sunday blog. So the Sunday blog's... They, if you get blogged about on Sunday, you kind of luck out. You know, you get a weekend blog on him. You don't want like a Monday blog. That's not good. Uh, so is it? did it come up there? Okay. So we're going to talk about this lady here at Worcester Tech. Because this one really fucking pissed me off. I don't know why. And I think it pissed off a lot of people, as it should. 
So um, this is her name is Jocelyn Coughlin. She is a teacher at Worcester Technical High School, a science teacher in a department head. And as you can see, she is a fitness enthusiast. Saw a lot of people commenting about uh, <laughs> she just does, she does freaking CrossFit. So that's why she's so strong. I mean, some people have had like that. I don't know. But uh, she teaches at Worcester Tech. So for those of you unfamiliar, Worcester Tech is the premier school in Worcester. It's the one you want to be teaching at. It's the only one of the Worcester Public Schools that is selective in the kind of students that they can have there. They, uh, you know, they have like a process to get in. Obama, Obama. Barack Obama was the graduation speaker there in 2014. I did a blog on it because uh, people were all fired up when he came here. Some people were mad. Uh, so they, you know, it's a brand new school. It's like, you know, uh, state of the art. It's awesome there. Like it's the school you want to go to if you live in Worcester. Like it's completely changed the narrative about like what, you know, tech kids are supposed to be grunts. They're supposed to be car, you know, motorhead, stuff like that. It's completely changed there. It's like a revolutionary high school. So she teaches there. So she got a good gig and she's the department head there. So she's got an even better gig. Uh, she's been in the system for years. She's probably making, I think somebody looked it up, well over $90,000 a year. She's almost maxed out uh, as a teacher there. So she's got it pretty good. Anyway, um, she also uh, is big in the union. She's a big member in the union. And so she's been posting a lot of this, you know, fear porn stuff about remote learning. Like you see all these kids coming in here, 97,000 cases. Oh, my God. Damn. Like, look at the pray symbol. Oh, pray for us. So we're going to survive. We're teachers. We might get oh, COVID. Oh, my God. You know, guys, we need to normalize commie cold. That needs to be a new thing that we need to start pushing. Normalize commie cold it's like magic johnson with aids right he got aids but does it really matter like does it really i mean he's not dead i mean he's had aids for like how long 30 years if magic johnson can survive with aids for 30 years you can survive with commie cold believe me it the vast majority of people who get it don't even come close to seeing a hospital and don't even know they have it over 60 percent of people who've died from this stupid disease have been in nursing homes. It's a nursing home epidemic. That's how this is going to go down in history. There's nothing to fear at all. Like if you get it and you're healthy, they actually, in, in the amount of misinformation that just ignorance that people have about it because of the media is startling. I forget who it was. Somebody did a, a study on this recently and they looked at, they interviewed a bunch of people uh, and they asked them, you know, what percent of, uh, COVID deaths, do you think are people over the age of 50, over the age of 50? And they guessed, people were guessing like 40%, 50% over the age of 50. No, <laughs> no, no. Over the age of 50, it's like 97%, I want to say, of COVID deaths. It's like startling. Like not, It's insane. <laughs> like over, over 70, I want to say is well over 50%, well over, well over that. So the, this idea that you can just, I don't know anyone has died of COVID. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. I don't. Um, I don't have any friends in nursing homes. That's a big thing. I don't hang out in nursing homes. So I don't, I don't know anyone that died of it. I probably know people who have had it. Like half of you listening right now, right now, you, you guys probably had it. I might've had it. I wouldn't have known because it's a pussy disease for somebody like me. Like I'm, thir I'm 38 years old. Like, COVID couldn't kill me if it tried to. Like, there's nothing it could do. I couldn't, if I wanted to die from commie cold, I couldn't do it. It's impossible to kill somebody my age, my demographic, with commie cold. It can't be done. So we need to start. That's what the, that's the new movement that we need to start pushing around here is normalize commie cold or COVID as they call it. Normalize COVID. Uh, it's okay to have COVID it doesn't mean you're, it's, you're not a leper. You just, you got commie cold. It means really little, like you don't even, so they're testing people on college campuses all over the country, right? Like no university of Notre Dame. Uh, they, they allowed everybody to come back on campus and you know, they were having parties and stuff up there. Next thing you know, they tested a bunch of kids, like 80 kids had COVID, right? And now they've canceled in school learning. Now they're doing this for football because their Notre Dame will sell its left nut to have a football season. It's how Notre Dame is a very nice school. I've been there many times. It's paid for by the football program. Like nothing, all the other stuff, all the other teams, 
exist because of the football team. They, they have all the money. They make all the money. So they have to have football. And so they're willing to basically send kids home and have, have them learn remotely for like how many weeks and months or whatever in order to have football. The University of North Carolina did the same thing. They had another outbreak and blah, blah, blah. We need to normalize outbreaks. We need to normalize cases. We need to normalize COVID. It's okay to have COVID. It doesn't mean anything. It literally means nothing. If you need to be tested for it because you don't even know you have it, then who the what? Who fuck cares, right? Like it's one thing if you're like heezing and weaving and you can't breathe, and you're like, oh shit, let me get tested, and it's like I got COVID. Better go to the hospital, get you on a ventilator. That's one thing. But if you have it and you don't even, you aren't even showing anything, who the fuck cares? I mean, what are we doing? We're canceling college because of this? Insane. Absolutely insane. High school football in Massachusetts is canceled. <laughs> it's, the MIA is canceling football. They've not canceled any other sports. Quite frankly, the cross country, that, that was a sport I was into, right? I coached it. Uh, at the, the, I don't the, uh, if they're familiar with this, but during cross country races, yes, sometimes the kids get spaced apart, but oftentimes there are packs of kids and you'll never see kids breathe more heavily on each other than in a cross country race. It's like, that would be the number one COVID spreader. I would think is cross country, especially in the big district meets where it's like 200 kids line up in a line and they just go, it's, it's madness, but football is canceled for some reason. I mean, there's a. <laughs> You should be much more worried about your kid dying from a brain injury or, you know, being paralyzed than commie cold playing football. Are you kidding me? Madness. Absolute madness. So I don't got, I mean, I feel awful for the high school seniors, right? That are, you know, what if you're a division one prospect? What if you're like a three-star recruit trying to become a four-star recruit and you, you go to St. John's prep or something like that, or Zavarian, what are you going to do? You got to move. You got to move, go down to one of the free states, go down to one of the cool states, American states, go to North Carolina, go to freaking South Carolina, go to Florida, go to Georgia, go to Texas, go to Alabama, go to Tennessee, go to a fun state, go to Missouri, get the fuck out of here. There's no, there's no future for you here. They're just going to restrict your freedom. Get out of here. And why is that? Cause of misinformation, man, misinformation. Eddie says New Jersey schools are canceled already. Are they playing football in New Jersey, Eddie? Because New Jersey produces more quality football players than almost any state in the country. They're right up there with like Alabama, Florida. Some of the best players in the NFL traditionally come from New Jersey. Like they have great high school football there. Are they going to have a team season? I don't know. I don't know. I would imagine there's going to be a mass exodus of Division One talent just leaving the state if that happens. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's just, insane. So it, it gets spread with this misinformation, right? About, um, as you can see here, um, she's like, damn, oh my God, kids have cases. Oh my God. No football, no nothing as of now. Oh, great. Awesome. Cause you guys have a terrible governor too. Your governor sucks balls, man. I wish you guys had Chris Christie. Now that's a guy who should be afraid of COVID Chris Christie, but he probably isn't because I mean, he's corrupt as hell, but he's a lot better than the other guy, Phil Murphy there. Anyway, Jocelyn uh, says six hours of teacher contract negotiations hours today, and I have no updates for teachers. All I can say is your fate will be determined at the school committee meeting tomorrow night. Please protect our vulnerable teachers and allow choice to teach at home or in buildings. Oh, my God. So basically, the uh, she's on the union, and the school committee negotiates whether or not they've already decided on full remote learning in Worcester. But the teachers don't even want to go into school to sit in a classroom by themselves, by themselves. No one else is around and open up their computer and stream from a desk. They won't do it. They don't want to do it because they're unsafe. Fuck you. That's when that's the moment they gave away the game, guys. That is the moment they gave away the fact that they're completely full of shit. They're completely full of shit. Before it was, oh my God, this is gonna be so it's gonna be so crowded and kids can't see it six feet apart and they're asymptomatic and they're gonna spread it. And oh my god, we're all gonna get commie cold. Well, now the kids aren't there, so you got nothing to worry about. So why can't you go in? You you just don't want to go in. You got used to a lifestyle of five straight months of working in your PJs. 
I know. I it's nice. I used to be in your shoes. I used to have the commute. I used to be up every day at five thirty, right? To be into school. I know what that's like. I know I used I used to wear pants that didn't have elastic weights. It sucks. Believe I used to wear belts and shit. Awful. Terrible. I I understand. I feel the pain. But just admit it. Now you like it. You like it. It's nice, right? When you wake up in the morning and you're already at work, that's a pretty cool feeling. You know, sleep another hour or two if you want. Be just as productive. It's very cool. Very cool. I get it, but just be honest about it. it. This has nothing to do with being scared at school. There's nothing to be scared of. And so now they're all blaming on HVAC systems. Oh my God, they didn't check and update the HVACs. What the, these people are all HVAC experts now? What are you talking about? Oh my God, the air is going to come in and it's not being refiltered correctly. What do you, who gives a shit? Who cares? Who cares? Are you kidding me? How many buildings you do you check the H? Do you when you go to Walmart? You're like, hey, how's the HVAC in here? Are you kidding me? HVAC? She teaches at Worcester Tech. Whatever they have there is the best of the best. It's up to date. There's other schools in Worcester. Grafton Street Elementary School in Worcester was built in 1869. I shit you not. 1869. There's some schools in Worcester. They look, they look like goddamn prisons. Like Worcester East Middle looks like a prison from the outside. You really would think it's a goddamn prison. And these buildings are so old. And I understand it. But who cares? Just go anyway. You're going to be fine. You'd be fine with kids. You're certainly going to be fine without them. So they don't want to go. The school committee, the Worcester School Committee, votes 7 to 0. 7 0 to grant them their wish. They get to choose now whether or not they're going to go into work. I think you should go in not only because you should go in to prove a point, but more than anything, in my opinion, it creates somewhat of a sense of normalcy for kids to see their teacher dressed up professionally behind a desk in a classroom with a room full of resources there. Like, I don't want my kid to see you sitting in your living room. I don't want to see your family pictures in the background there. I don't want to see your dining room table. I don't want to see any of that shit. I want to see the classroom. I want to create that sense of normalcy for the children. But you don't care about the kids. These people don't give a shit about the kids. So she, she had this long ass post. I'm not even going to read the whole goddamn post in the post. She actually says that even with, um, schools don't open up until masks and social distancing aren't required. That's what she says. We should not go back to school until masks are no longer needed and social distancing is no longer needed. Well, first of all, they're no longer needed. Now we don't have to do that. Secondly, according if we're going to play that game, it's never going to happen because your rules are like, Kami Cole has to be gone in order for that to happen. Kami Cole has to be gone. And it's Kami, it's part of life, man. People got to get over this idea that we can hide from the virus. You can't hide from this, baby. It's coming to get you. COVID's coming for you. It's coming. Protect the elderly, hide them, maybe. But it's healthy people, you're going to get it. Everyone's going to get it. You have to get it. It's like the chicken box. You got to get it. Except it's less annoying than the chicken pox because you know you have the chicken pox. By the way, do we have a vaccine for chicken pox? Not to get off topic here, but uh, you never hear about kids having chicken pox in these days. But in the 90s, I was part of life was growing up was getting a chicken pox. Everybody got that. You, you wanted to get the chicken. If you didn't get it by like second grade, you went to a party and your parents threw you in with a bunch of other chicken pox lepers and everybody got it. Is it done? I don't know. They do have a vaccine. Okay, see, I didn't know that. So I guess my kids got the chicken pox vaccine. There you go. We didn't have that in the 90s. We didn't have that. All right, I learned something new every day. Anyway, um, so this chick's like, you know, writing all this long shit, blah, 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 blah. Be kind. And I thought this stat was interesting. In Chicopee, they said that 37% of ELL students, 31% of SPED kids, and 33% of students of color missed or uh, were absent for remote learning sessions with their teachers. 2% of white kids were. 2%. 2%. 8 percent of kids have no access to the internet. That's not acceptable. Like, so they just don't learn? Who do you think those kids are that don't have access to the internet? You tell me. So when I talk about systemic racism, 
this is systemic racism. When you have a, a profession that is almost entirely white teaching and you have school districts like Worcester, which are majority minority, and you know, you're looking at the data and it's just like, it is what it is. Kids, students of color are just, they're missing school, man. They're missing it. For whatever reason, they're not showing up. Only 2% of white kids are. So what's going to happen now? They're going to fall further behind. The achievement gap, which is a favorite buzzwords of educators, the achievement gap is the difference between, you know, test scores and, you know, uh, academic achievement between students of color and, and white students. They never talk about Asian students, by the way, because that's a really big achievement gap. But they don't, they, they ignore Asian students as usual. Um, but this achievement gap is obviously going to grow as a result of this because kids of color, right? They're not in school. They're missing school at higher rates. They need school, especially like sped kids need school. ELL kids. I mean, ELL, they can't speak English, right? They need a teacher. And I, and I believe me, I had these kids in class, the level, you know, I love, we had level one kids and level two kids, level one kids were the higher ones. Um, Level one kids were, for the most part, fine, right? You came into class, you could just give a lecture or give a lesson or whatever and teach it. And 90% of the kids would be in there paying attention the whole time, taking notes, doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe a couple kids wander, their eyes wander sometimes here and there. No. Level two classes, ooh, different. My buddy, my old buddy, Dave Blondin, he was in a level two class. And like I said, Dave wasn't the greatest student, but he was. he actually shined in this class, solid C. But the, the rest of the kids in this class, it was like you had to stay on them constantly, constantly. They were constantly looking around, fucking around, touching each other, doing shit they weren't supposed to be doing, just not paying attention. You know when a kid isn't listening to you because they're not making eye contact with you and they're staring off into space. And when you're in the classroom with them, you can go over to the walk over to the desk, knock on the desk. Pay attention, you know, call on them. You see that they're not listening, call on them. You can't do that with remote learning. How are you going to do that? It's impossible. So these kids are going to fall behind more and more and more. Uh, and they just don't give a shit. The majority white teachers just like, that's fine. That's systemic racism. All these. And, and ironically, these are the same teachers, these radical left wing teachers, for the most part, not all of them. I get a lot of messages from teachers who are like completely in agreement with me, by the way, all the time, all the time. And these are the people that supported, you know, Black Lives Matter and we need to end systemic racism. Bitch, you are systemic racism. Don't you get it? You are hurting black children. You're hurting brown children. You're hurting students uh, with learning disabilities. You're hurting kids that are ELL. You're hurting them. You don't care though, because you're scared. Allegedly. Allegedly. That's what you say you're scared. Even if you were scared, get over it. I hate to say it at this point, but get over it. It's not about you anymore. It's not about you. You work for us. Sometimes I forget, think these people, it's like, have they ever thought about where their money comes from. And we'll get to that later. But anyway, um, this is what else she writes that, uh, she, you know, she's happy that they won, that the, uh, they're going to do remote learning. How is remote learning going to stop the virus from spreading? Are you going to keep an eye on these kids all day? What happens when they go and hang out with their friends after school? They're going to do it. The lockdown's over. Like nobody's sitting in their homes anymore. Hiding. It's not happening. So what, what's the, they're going to spread it. Like this is, how is this stopping the spread? It's not going to stop the spread. We all just got to get it. And so they got their way and they're all happy about it. And seven, nothing decision. And one teacher credit to this woman, Erin, she says she's disappointed with the decision. Students in life skills, classrooms need in-person learning. God bless you, Erin. You're absolutely right about that one. And Jocelyn says they do, but they're often the most at risk. What? at risk. No students are at risk. It's impossible for a student to be at risk of COVID. However, they are at risk of failing and falling behind, which is another thing, by the way, can you fail a kid this year? Because I think you'd have a, a pretty compelling, if you had an attorney lawyer that said, like, if you failed my kid for the year, it's like, bitch, you didn't give me adequate, you didn't give me a chance. I would assume, I'm guessing that principals are going to give directors to teachers and just say, do not fail anybody. That's what's going to happen this year. 
Do not fail anybody. So, um, you know, they're like, I understand your position, but it's a risky move to keep them in person. It's not, though. It's not. And this woman writes, it's, in my opinion, that should be the parent's call. God bless you. God bless you. It's like, what a novel idea. It's like, they're my kids. They're my kids. I should decide if it's appropriate for them to go back. Not you. I don't, who appointed you protector of my children? Uh, and as she said, most parents in every survey, in every district, they want to return. They want to return. Um, so she goes on to say, I'm sure they do, but we want to be back for them too. But in my opinion, it's not safe at the time. Nobody gives a shit what your opinion is. Your opinion's stupid. And it's not even really your opinion. You don't even believe that. And another question. This is a trade school. What are they going to do about trades, right? How is a hairdresser? Like they have a hairdresser program at Worcester Tech. How the hell are they going to learn how to do it from home? What hair are they going to dress? Are you kidding me? How are the kids doing mechanic, like working out cars or plumbers or carpentry or electricians? How the hell are they supposed to learn it electronically? You can't. You can't. How are they going to get a job afterwards? Like, well, you know, I did some remote learning, especially senior year. This is an important year for kids with trades. And she says, Unfortunately, it's the same as the rest of the city. Trades will do their best to teach the content through Zoom and interactive websites. Imagine thinking that you can learn plumbing through Zoom. Are you kidding me? It's not ideal at all, but they can't make exceptions and put kids in the building. Yes, you can make exceptions and put kids in the building. You absolutely can. A lot of districts are doing that as part of their plan to come back. Is like kindergarten comes first. In a lot of districts, the youngest grade in each school comes back first, which makes sense. Kindergartners should be, the younger kids should be back earlier because they they need to be, they have the shortest attention spans. They need to be in school. So they absolutely, you absolutely can make exceptions. You can make exceptions for special ed. They need to be there more than anybody else. ELL. Of course you can. Like, what is this woman talking about? And then Molly McCullough chimes in. She's on the school committee. A woman who I thought was okay, but she's she's the most useless person on the Worcester School Committee. I don't want to waste too much time on Worcester politics. Basically, she didn't back the superintendent up until like it was time to vote. Like She wouldn't vocally come out and support her when she was being attacked and called a racist last year. She's fucking useless. Completely useless. Just another gutless, sackless politician. I cannot stand these people. They get in the office and they're so afraid to like hurt people. Give me a break. Anyway, Molly says, um, this is the sample remote schedule for tech students and teachers. Additional information will be worked out for specific trades and what the options will be. What the fuck does that even mean? Politician answer. Anyway, it's all moot point, really. Because here is Jocelyn's photo album from the summer, literally entitled Summer 2020 COVID Summer. And there she is right there. Summer 2020 COVID summer. You got to be kidding me, guys. You got to be kidding me. And there they are outdoors. Now, this is not that close, obviously, but look at this picture. This is an interesting picture. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 women. <laughs> and it's such a small area. Oh, but they're outside, but they don't have masks on. They don't have the magical masks. They're violating several. They're, they're violating the six feet rule here. They're, they're, they're violating the freaking mask rule. Which, these are stupid rules, obviously. But these are the people that allegedly that's how we're going to stop the spread. So this picture alone is incriminating enough because it's like, you're telling us we can't go back until we stop the spread. But here you are spreading it. This image and the other ones too, like this one right here, this is not outside. This is inside. No masks. This woman is literally wearing a shirt that says socially distant. Can't make this stuff up. There's seven of them in that picture. All right. On a fucking couch in a chair, basically. No masks. Breathing all over each other. Partying it up. If you're a teacher in this woman's school and your kid can't go back because of her. How are you not furious? These parents I know that I talk to, they are furious. They're like, are you fucking kidding me? Our kids, I have to like quit my job and watch my kid 
Because you say that you're scared of getting COVID, and here you fucking are. You have the nerve to title an album COVID Summer 2020 and hang out with all your other teacher friends and breathe all over each other and shit. Are you kidding me? They don't, nobody fears the stupid virus. It's all just made up. Nobody fucking fears this shit. And by the way, here's all their kids. They had like a gaggle of children. Look at all these kids. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 kids in one picture. 18. That's a classroom right there. No masks, breathing all over each other. Are they trying to stop the spread? Of fucking course not. They're living their lives. They're living their lives. One, two, three, four, five, six, 79, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18 kids. They don't give a shit. You, your kids can't, as long as they're not learning math. That's the only time COVID spreads is when you're learning math. It doesn't spread when you're at the beach or, you know, protesting social justice. Here's another picture of their vacation. There she is right there. And look who's next to her. That's Molly McCullough from the school committee. They went on goddamn vacation together. This should be a scandal. How is the a member of the school committee voting on policy that her friend who she just went on vacation with in the union is advocating for? Why is a member of the school committee this close with the union? To me, this is corrupt. She should resign. This is an object. This is completely morally reprehensible. Disgusting. Anyway, um, I just could not believe. And a lot of people in the comments like, oh, she's a really nice person, blah, blah, blah. You know, I've known her for years. You should take this down. Fuck you. Fuck you. I, I hate when that shit happens. And they're like, oh, you you really like Turtle Boy until somebody you know's on it, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, you don't like it so much then when somebody you know's on, oh, a really nice person. She's not a really nice person. I don't give a shit what she's done in her past. She's a liar. She's lying when she says she's afraid of the virus because she doesn't want to go to work. She's clearly not afraid of COVID. Those pictures prove it. Not a single person in there gives a fuck about COVID. And she ends it with educators. You've got this. We're all in this together. Now that's the biggest lie since 15 days to stop the spread. It's the biggest lie. So that's that. And to give you guys an example really of exactly uh, why we need school for these kids, bring up this blog from Worcester, right? Of Vernon Hill. Do you guys watch these little hood boogers? Let's check him out. He's Junior McRatchets. So there was a uh, a softball game going on in Vernon Hill. Vernon Hill is the ghetto. The ghetto. It's a ghetto in Worcester. And, you know, I used to work in the pools. I, th I wrote this in the blog, right? Wild times work in the Worcester, at the Worcester pools. Uh, <laughs> for, when I went to Great Brook Valley for a day, they didn't let chicks. I've got a Great Brook Valley. They sent me over there one day. And this guy, Angel, came in, 12-year-old, like 5'10", 200 pounds, 12, of course, riding a stolen bike, comes in there. And he just starts calling me cowboy for some reason. And all the other, like, I got there. All the lifeguards are sitting together, which I thought was weird. And they're like, oh, yeah, we have to sit together. They'll they'll throw you in if you don't. <laughs> That's uh, like, I'm like, what? Uh, and so, you know, uh, Angel set me up good. He's like. Yo, gringo, he kept calling. Yo, cowboy, yo, cowboy. I bet you can't throw this ball to my boy over there. And he gives me a football. So, okay. So I throw it across the pool to his boy. It was no problem. It wasn't that far. And next thing you know, I'm in the fucking pool. It was just a setup to set me and to push me in the goddamn pool. That's all they do. That's all these. It's, that's what Worcester kids do during the summer. They're bored as shit. They got nothing to do. So they go to the three foot pools, which don't exist anymore, by the way. They've gotten rid of all those. And they just cause trouble all the time, all the fucking time. They, uh, one time they burned down our goddamn shed at University Park, right in Crystal Park area, Clark University. They, they brought a fucking tennis ball and they put a gasoline in a wick and they lit it on fire. It's a homemade bomb, blew up the fucking shed because <laughs> they wanted to go inside and rob it. That's it. There's nothing in there to take. So that's Worcester during the summer. And that's a lot of cities during the summer. That's Lawrence, I'm sure. That's Holyoke, you name it. Worcester is not unique when it comes to bored children causing trouble. And so there is a, a game at Vernon Hill. And this is what happens. Let's check it out. <laughs> Look at these kids. I mean, this is funny to me. Hey, 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 hey,
So that goes on for a little bit. And then there's the, the field of broken dreams. So they literally like start. This is fucking hilarious. They abandon the field. Like these kids just start running onto the field. They literally just commandeer the goddamn field. But one of them has a knife, apparently. <laughs> what the fuck is this? They're loving it, though. These kids are loving it. They're like, yes, yeah, somebody's giving us attention. I like how he's doing the mask thing. <laughs> oh, another kid jumps over. <laughs> like, what are they doing? They're here to threat. Like, what a bunch of little shits. Then there's this one, the third one. So they're like over here. I don't know. Like the coach is good for the coaches for really, you know, de escalating the situation or attempting to. Where are the police? That's what I want to know. How is there not like a detail cop at this game? Because literally, like all it takes is one cop and these kids shit their pants. They're not Antifa. They, these kids love to play cat and mouse with the cops. When I was working at University Park Life Garden, we had this Worcester cop. I remember him well because I got to know him very well. His name was Joe Ford. He was young back in the day. And every single day, like I had Joe, he gave me his cell phone. He's like, just call me if you have a problem. He's like, I'll be in this. It was a high crime area. So he's constantly around there. I'd call him like every fucking day, every single day. One time there was this kid, Tyrell who I had to kick out of the pool, 14 years old. I had to kick out Tyrell and uh, cause he'd be a little shithead causing problems in the pool. And I banned him from the pool for the day. Well, Tyrell didn't like that. So he came back with the baby daddy who, of course he's like, I'm going to go get my baby dad. I'm going to go get my dad. He going to fuck you up. Now he probably sees his dad once every couple months Oh boy, his dad was fun. His dad, of course, I so I call the cops and he calls his dad and it's a race. And by the way, the mother was there too, Tyrell's mother. Tyrell's mother is wearing a shirt that who she was probably about 29. She's wearing a shirt that says a pink shirt. I remember well it says, I love boys. <laughs> and she's all yelling, Oh hell no! Oh hell no! Ain't nobody kicking my baby out of the pool. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm going to call his daddy down here. He going to fuck you up. He going to fuck you up. Ain't nobody kicking my baby out of the pool. So she calls the baby daddy up and I call up Joe Ford. And it's a race to see who's going to get there first. Of course, the baby daddy is literally at a barbecue down the street. So he gets there. <laughs> the whole fucking pool clears. Now it's a square pool. So I have the benefit now. He shows up in a wife beater and shit. He's there to do business. Whatever way he's going. I'm just going the opposite way. So we're doing this for a while. Meanwhile, Tyrell's on the other side of the fence going, oh, you're scared now, motherfucker. You're scared now, bitch. And the baby mom is yelling it too. So this is my life. This is like what these kids do all summer. So when I see these videos, I'm like, yep, Worcester hasn't changed. I left it, but it's still fucking Worcester. This is just how shit is. I remember it's, it's almost humorous. I also worked at Fanning. So I worked with kids like this for fucking two years teaching them. I know Worcester kids. They're, why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Well, for starters, they have shitty parents, a lot of them. Like nobody, none of them know their fucking dads unless they're at the barbecue down the street, obviously. And they're called in for reinforcement in case the lifeguard kicks you out. Uh, and they, they are right there. Um, they're just looking. What these kids, what I learned while working at Fanning with these kids is that as much as they pretend like they hate you and they don't like you. Like they don't want to be there and stuff like that. They do. They really do. They enjoy school because, uh, school provides them with something they've never had otherwise in their life. And that is structure and discipline secretly like human nature, human beings want to be told what to do. They want order. We all crave it. At the end of the day, we crave order. We want somebody to tell us when we're doing something bad, not to do that and to correct our behavior. Why? Why do we want that? Because it's a sign of love. It is a sign of affection because it's a sign that you care about me, right? You want me to be a better person 
So you're correcting my behavior. And these kids at this age, they're smart enough to realize that. And they realize that their parents, they really don't love them though. They, they, they say they do. They have a shitty way of showing it because they, their entire lives, they have not been held responsible for their behavior for the most part. You know, when I say responsible, it's like, in these homes, you know, mom yells at you. It's like the only time mom's yelling at you, it's like if you're fucking blocking the, blocking the TV. Yo, you dumb motherfuckers won't shut the fuck up in there and try to watch my show. Fuck is wrong with you, little bitches? A lot of that going on in homes. I'm telling you, it's just, if you, unless you've been subjected to this culture, there's a culture within America. It's quite prevalent, too. There's a, millions and millions of people who live like this. And it's a complete culture shock for people who come from two parent homes, uh, or at least, you know, you can come from a single mom home too, or a single dad home, whatever, uh, in which, you know, education is valued. Teachers are respected. Police are respected. Order is respected. Rules are important. Stuff like that. But these kids don't come from homes like that, but they secretly want it. And like, you can, these kids break down so easily. Let me tell you, as much as these kids are tough guys and stuff like that, at Fanning Man, I saw kids like this cry all the fucking time. All the time. And I don't know if you guys watched The Wire, but there's a great episode in season four when they do the schools. There's this little kid, Albert, in there. And one day, Albert's in class. And he's just like, yo, I, I ain't doing this dumbass motherfucking class. Yo, y'all bitches, blah, blah, blah. And they, they, they can't kick him out. And then they get him a room and alone. They start talking to a counselor. And the kid fucking starts breaking down. It's a powerful scene. The kid starts breaking down crying. He's like, I found my mom dead yesterday and stuff like that. Like these kids, the, like this all, this all, this whole display you saw here, this is anger. This is anger. And they're coming down here to the field because they know that for once adults are going to tell them what to do and they actually secretly enjoy that they they they're, they're bored they've never had like they want to be told to get off the field they they don't hit poli like when the poli if if Joe Ford the cop came there and there's 50 kids they're running they're going to scatter i saw it all the time whenever the cops came the kids would just scatter they love the chase they love the chase because someone is paying attention to them for once. They want attention. Human beings crave attention, don't we? Everybody wants it a little bit because it's like a sign that like, oh shit, somebody cares about me, you know? And they're not getting it. And that's my whole point here, why we need to go back to school is that these kids are not getting attention anymore because there is no school. In the summer, it's expected, right? But the summer is only supposed to last two months. For these kids, summer has now lasted almost six months. And it's been that long since they've been in front of a teacher. They probably almost forgot what it's like to be in a classroom. And they're not going to have that in two weeks when they should. Because this teacher from Worcester Tech and other union hacks like her are only are more concerned about themselves. You know, these, these teachers don't live on Vernon Hill. Why would you live on Vernon Hill if you're a teacher? You can live on the west side. It's nicer. You can move to Holden or Paxton. You can get out of Worcester. It's the whole point. They're, they don't give a shit about these kids. They don't want what's best for them. These kids need to be in a school, man. They need structure. They need discipline. They'll do it, man, if you tell them. Trust me. Kids do like the 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 start, like I always was amazed by the teachers like that. The cool teachers are the ones that got run over. Kids have zero respect for the cool teachers. The old school mom who doesn't put up your bullshit, they might not like you to your face. They might, you know, you might you might not get a lot of pictures at the end of the year with them, but they respect the hell out of those teachers. Let me tell you, they respect the hell out of those teachers and they do what they're told. I saw some of the wildest kids, you know, Worcester East Middle when I was subbing there. With if you had the right teacher, those kids sat and they fucking listened and they did their work. They can do it. They can do it. They just need an adult to hold them responsible, stay on them, be accountable, stuff like that. You think any kids in that video are going to do their goddamn remote learning? Do you think any kids in there think their mom is going to wake up in the morning and be like, well, first of all, a lot of these kids are coming from single parent homes. And what if their parents are working? 
They're just going to leave them home alone. That's going to happen all the time now. There's going to be unsupervised children just sitting at home. But they don't care. The teachers don't care because they're scared. They're so scared. I mean, this was actually, this is one of the kids who actually uh, stormed the field. And I saw, I saw this comment after I started writing the blog. I inserted it in. I'm like, holy shit, this kid just literally said everything I was saying. All my, my theory came true. This kid just spilled it all out there. He said, look, I was one of those kids in the video, but we, that's why he needs to be back in school, but we, but we did that because we were bored and nothing to do in Vernon. They took our, our hoops again, got to be back in school. That's the other thing. They took the goddamn basketball hoops down because of fucking COVID. We're going to look back on this and be like, man, we fucked over poor kids really badly. Didn't we, huh? We gave them nothing to do. We just said to just sit in our home. Like it was, it's easy to fucking for Nancy Pelosi to sit in her, her, uh, you know, her mansion and eat ice cream during uh, lockdown. Not so easy for these people. Right. And so he's like, um, they took our ho hoops. What are we supposed to do? We like being active, but there's nothing to do no more. We have no football or basketball. I'm sorry for the way we were acting, but at the end of the day, when you guys were leaving, see you, it was raining. He had disrespected us, quote, on, quote, unquote, saying, I would say something about y'all fathers, but y'all probably don't have any. Mind you, most of us don't have fathers. <laughs> It's like, because they're lot, either locked up or dead or sick in the hospital like mine. But I'm just saying this because if the city was, I mean, this is fucking perfect. With this, kid. this kid's literally saying everything I'm saying. Um, and this is the truth of it all. It's like, this is fucking reality, people. It's not it's people's, the le Democrats, that's racist to stereotype them as that. Well, it's, it's also fucking true. He's saying it right now. <laughs> right. Um. Because if the city was willing to work with us instead of against our community, would be going forward towards greater things and making our future generation that would be coming to Vernon, a better generation off the streets and into a gym or field doing something they love. But instead of doing that, they're doing the opposite. Little do they know our future generation are watching us today. But like I said, I'm not that old. I'm only 14. But but I understand society mainly ca cause interact. With my community, I'm, I mean, this is just goes on. This is, you read this kid's thing. It's like, you have no idea how many kids write like this too. These kids need fucking school. <laughs> That's not going to get fixed. That centigraph ain't getting fixed on remote learning. <laughs> no, 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 no. This kid's screaming out. He's telling you, he's like, I'm doing this because I'm bored as fuck. And I like to be a little shit at when I'm bored as fuck. So K Toomey says, who's a city councilor. I've been, I've given this woman crap over the years, uh, but she's really good on the police stuff. So I credit her for that. And she says, we can't bring back the hoops because of COVID-19. You can though, Kate, you can, you just put them back up. A lot of cities have their basketball hoops up. You just put the goddamn hoops back up. That's it. And you say, fuck off, fuck off. If you don't like it. So anyway, that's my rant for today. Uh, why don't we do, let's do a little question and answer now. I ask total boy, anything you guys want to ask me, go ahead. The floor is yours. Uh, if anybody wants to call in, I will go ahead and put the stream there. Oh yeah, by the way, let me um hit that refresh the dono button. Okay, got a couple donos here to read off. We got seven pounder says, I want Milky Mike. That I'm also a quote unquote frequent contributor to your quote unquote basement begging show to do some pro bono work for Karen Gold Goldenberg. Yeah, from today, that chick. Buy her some boobs while you're at it. I know how much you like fire crotches. Ooh, roasted. Christine says, happy to contribute. Well, thank you. I'm happy to accept Christine. I appreciate that very much. Okay. What about the mandated flu shot? A lot of people talking about that. I mean, for, I don't know that much about the flu shot. I've, I've gotten it before. I have my kids get it, so it doesn't mean that much to me. We do it anyway. Um, but it's an interesting one because if you're if you're against mandatory flu vaccines, are you an anti-vaxxer? I mean, I mean, I'm not knowledgeable in this situation because I know we a lot of people look down and prior to COVID, 
a lot of people made fun of, and I was one of them. I made fun of anti-vaxxers. Um, and I thought they were crazy, but the COVID shit, I mean, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I never will be. I'll always get my kids vaccinated, but, um, it's kind of made you open your eyes a little bit to the whole, like, Oh, maybe these people were kind of onto something. I don't know. You guys tell me, I, I don't, why are you okay with mandatory to go to school? Cause your kids have to get vaccinated to go to public schools to get, to get the polio vaccine and stuff like that. Why are you okay with mandatory vaccines for polio, but not for um, the flu. I'm generally curious what the difference is. So um, I'm against mandatory any, I mean, I'm against just any given the power of the government right now to like control our health. I don't like that at all, but yeah, we'll see. All right, other questions. One out of five chance of it working for the flu. So it's not even effective. Is that what we're saying? Can we call war rack? Uh, no, I'm, I called, I've had war rack on the show a couple times. They're not even fun. They're not entertaining. It's literally like ghetto beavis and butthead. You know, there's like, yo, turtle boy, you fucking chalmers the fuck. Like they're not fun. They're not like, you know, MC spectrum. He's, he was fun. At least, uh, they're not fun. They're fun to watch. I could watch them all day. I just, fa I literally, fa I fast forward to the part when he jumps out of wherever he's hiding. That's the only part that interests me whatsoever. Fojo update, I don't have much. Um, okay, so Sunny says that, uh, this is interesting. She says, uh, I believe in um, vaccines for polio, but I don't get down with the flu because there's different strands of flu. That's a good point. So is, is the flu vaccine one size fits all? There's been a lot of opposition to this. I've seen a lot of it. So I don't know. Um, Lorena update. Uh, I don't have one. Um, I've heard rumors that the restraining order was granted against Lorena and not vice versa. But um, I, I don't want to pry too much with Denise that uh, there's probably she does. She wants this to go away, you know, and her lawyer wants this to go away. I'm sure, too. Other questions. If you if I missed you, I'm not going back and scrolling through, so feel free to ask again. So you out ha you have to have tits to get your question answered. Okay, water boy, what's your question, pal? Feel free to ask. Tyrell's dad. What happened? Did the 50 pinch him? Oh, I'm sure he's dead somewhere. He was all fucking high and shit. I mean, he, I probably could have kicked his ass, but I wasn't. Who knows what he was carrying? Dave Blondin updates. So Dave, I mean, Dave's gym is reopened, so he's back in business. I, I assume Dave's just not going to pay his fines. That's what he said. He's not going to do. I and mean, good for him. Fuck that. Don't pay the fines. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah. I, I love how the, <laughs> the people that don't like me, they're always like, you, you're in the basement. It's like, you, you know, I don't, I don't live here, right? Like I don't sleep in the basement. Do they think I sleep here? Like there's, there's a hole upstairs. That's why they call it the basement. Cause it's below the upstairs part. It's the foundation of the house. So I'm down. I don't, I don't sleep down here. You know, that. Like I have a bed and shit. There's a couch. There's a television up there, the dining room table, all types of shit. Really kids, toys, <laughs> you're in a basement. Well, I would do it upstairs. I used to do the show upstairs. But I kept waking up the kids. So the wife ended that real quick. So that, now I'm down here where you find people. <laughs> and it's kind of like authentic, the basement show. No, it's like, it's our thing, you know, live from the basement. So, so if that's the best that you got on me is that I do it in the basement. It's like, oh, no, owned. You got me. I'm in the fucking basement. Oh, owned. <laughs> all right any other questions what was water boys whiny question oh i gotta go watch the i gotta oh i gotta see the biden speech is biden up yet i gotta call 
if Biden's up, I got to go. I got to see this speech. I, I got to see this speech if it's pre-recorded or not. I missed the, I mean, the, the rest of the convention has been such a snooze. It's been so bad. Do I like Rima? No, I hate Rima. And he's so fucking, uh, like, you know, Rima is fucking envious. You know, he is. Cause I bring the audience every week. He knows that he, he never even acknowledges my existence, which is interesting. Like, how do you not tweet? Like he doesn't follow me. He doesn't tweet back at me when I start, you know, hassling him, you know, giving him the business on Twitter. It's like, come on, Rima. Okay, we got Eddie Mato here. Eddie, what's up? Hey, what's up, Uncle? How you doing, man? Good things. Let me hold on one sec. I got to switch the audio real quick. Hold on. So that we can get you the right audio. Um, Hold on one sec. Cam Mike. Okay, that's your work. What's going on, Eddie? How can I help you? Listen, this whole Black Lives Matter movement which is okay. I don't want to sound like a racist because I'm not. Instead of them protesting the police, this and that, why don't they do something for the kids that can't go back to school and that are having a hard time learning and everything else? Why don't they put study groups together and focus on the, the younger generation instead of that going out and protesting police and everything else? Wouldn't that make sense? That makes perfect sense. There's a lot of things Black Lives Matter could be doing to show that they believe, you know, they, they want black kids particularly to advance and do well. But that's a great point, man. They ain't doing shit because they don't care about anything except their stupid Marxist agenda of hating police and abolishing prisons and blah, blah, blah. They don't give a fuck about black lives. They never have. And they just, yeah, basically they just wrote their, their kids off. They don't give a shit. That's exactly. how it looks to me. Exactly, man. Exactly. So cool, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. All right, any other questions, guys? If anybody else wants to come on, there it is. Boom. All right. Um, yeah, what does Rima do day to day, Laura? Uh, so he's like a freelance journalist. He writes for Outsports. It's like the gay sports thing. So he basically just obsesses over, you know, transgenders. Like, you know, the first black volleyball player for Division Three is breaking barriers. Like st stupid articles like that. So, um, yeah, Kirk is Kirk Manian's back Monday, I guess. I have some thoughts on that that I'm going to keep to myself for now, for now. Believe me, there's more to that story. I'm not happy about it. Let's just put it that way. I've taken one for the team with that one and stayed silent. But I don't know how long I could stay silent. So we'll see with that. We'll see. Do you podcast? So this is the podcast. This is the podcast, Vanilla. So I will – Upload these shows to our. We have a SoundCloud and a U and, and uh, SoundCloud and iTunes, which a lot of you people right now are listening on, so you know that that this is uploaded to afterwards. People prefer that sometimes because on YouTube, you know, if your phone is, you have to keep the phone on. It uses all the data. Uh, whereas where people are driving and stuff like that, they just want to throw on a pod. So it's on. You know, you can subscribe to us. Give us a five star review if you are on there on iTunes or on SoundCloud. All right. Has anyone told Biden who his vi vice president is yet? Nah, nah, it's the chick who called him a racist. Wait till he finds out about that. Yeah, gay sports, um, Laura, he's talking, like, you know, it's always the same shit. Like, you know, um, I, I interviewed a gay, a former gay minor league baseball player, and he talked about what his time was like working, you know, did he experience homophobia? Spoiler alert, he did. Uh, the stories like that. Oh, I like this one. What does everyone think about the cornhole tourney this spring? That's going to be interesting. I got another idea for a tournament, another idea that I kind of came up a uh, conversation with a turtle rider. I was talking about this. What if we had like turtle boy trivia, like a big contest of, I don't know how we do it. If it would have to be in person or whatever, teams, singular, we got to have like a tournament, just test your turtle boy knowledge. Like I ask questions like who said this line, I show pictures, name that ratchet. Something like that. That would be cool to see who is the most knowledgeable turtle rider out there. Something like that. I think it might be David Owen. I think I've come to the conclusion. That guy knows everything about Turtle Boy. That guy knows every fucking ratchet and their backstory better than I do sometimes. <laughs> but I think that'd be cool. I think that'd be fun. 
something like that. But a cornhole tournament could work too. I'm really excited about golf. Very excited about it. It's filling up fast. We've got like over 50 golfers signed up already. All 18 holes are already sponsored. So uh, it's going to be a good time. And no, you can't just show up afterwards. You can volunteer. If you'd like to volunteer, um, get in touch uh, with uh, Leah. Uh, you can email that turtleboysportsgolf at gmail.com. And uh, we can hook you up with that too. But I'm really looking forward to the tournament. It's going to be fun. Who's in our foursome? I'm going to be in the foursome with like Leah. I think Blarney Cated's in there. And who's our fourth? I forget. All right. GI Turtle, right? We're going to have GI, right? Okay, there you go. So there's our foursome. We should do a show with a drinking game and just drink and answer questions. Oh, God. Well, you do that every week, don't you, Brett? <laughs> I've, I've, I've done a live show with Brett. It was a drinking game. It's called How Many Keystone Lights Can Brett Finish Before the Show Is Over? Answer all of them. All of them. Yeah, some of the first live shows I did were actually at Brett's house in Athol. <laughs> Maddie Moe picked me up in my house, and we drove to Athol. Remember Maddie Moe? Trader? Judas? Judas Moe? Yeah, he picked me up and drove me to Brett's. That's the first. I think that was the first time I met Brett in person. And I, I brought – I was going to get a 12-pack, and Maddie's like, no, no, no. Got to be a 30. You got to be a 30. You haven't met Brett, have you? <laughs> Yeah. No, it was Keystone. I wouldn't bring Bud Light. I, I, I'm i a Keystone guy. Straight Keystone. I love Keystone Light. I'll drink it right. Like, I love Keystone Light. It's my favorite beer. It's it's the same thing as Coors Light, by the way. They just, all the, the Keystone cans, if you look at them, they all have dents on them. It's the same shape, same color. They're literally just Coors Light cans that got dented. And so they sell them for less. Fast fact. I, lo I love Coors Light because I like water beer. That's what I want. I'm not one of those guys who wants to like sniff it and taste the aroma and the barley and the hops. No, no, no. Just give me a beer. I'm drinking these beers. I'm going to drink a lot of them. That's why I like Keystone Light. Okie dokie. Any more last minute questions, guys, before we call it an evening? Exactly. $15 at 30. No way I'm paying for Bud Light. It's like 22, 23. You out of your mind? Oi. All right, guys. So I'm going to go watch the convention then. And uh, thank you guys all for joining and uh, uh, patronizing the show. Did I miss anyone here with donos? No, we're good. Okay. All right, guys. I appreciate uh, all the help. And I will see you all on Saturday night for the next episode of Turtle Boy Live. Peace, Turtle Riders.